it's Beth from Rock Your Notebook and I am excited to share this mixed media art journal spread that I did. I'm using a mixed media notebook from the shop in size B6 for this and it's always funny to me how um, notebooks look so much bigger when you're on video or taking a picture of them but it's B6 which is a 5 by 7 size so think of it as the same size as a 5 by 7 photo. And that's the size of the B6 notebook. So what I'm doing here is I'm adding gesso to the pages of the notebook with a um, card so that I get a really thin layer on the pages. And then I'm going to go ahead and dry it all. And I left the drying in here so you can see that when you have a really thin layer that it doesn't take a huge amount of time to dry. So the next thing I'm going to do is add the photo and this came from Wilma Furstenberg. She put out a class this month um, for only $4.99 which is to me amazing because one it's super super affordable. Two, it comes with this beautiful file and as well as cut files. So what I'm doing here is I'm using a liquid matte medium by Liquitex, which is my favorite medium for adhering things to pages. And I resized this so that it would fit my B6 notebook because it's really quite large. So I printed it at 65% uh, instead of 100%. And in hindsight, I probably could have gone a little bit smaller than 65, but it's all good. So then I'm using some of the same colors that she used in her class and some of the colors that are not the same and I'm doing a blending technique with um, my acrylic paints. I am using Liquitex heavy body paints which happen to be my favorite. I like the heavy body paints. I had run out of uh, titanium white heavy body which is weird for me because it's like a paint that I always have on hand in my stash but I ran out and I bought the Liquitex Basics and yes it works but it's a lot thinner than Heavy Body and you'll see why this becomes a problem for me later on in the video but I make it work and I'm really really happy with the way this whole page turned out. Now, also in hindsight, my Payne's Gray is either really cold or it's starting to get old. If you follow me, then you know that it's been a while since I've done an art journal page. So some of my product is a little old. It's like a year and a half old now without even being used because I haven't been art journaling the way I used to. And when I was art journaling like all the time, I would, you know, use up my paints a lot. But, um... I haven't been. So I wish I had added just a little bit of water to my Payne's Gray because it was really, really thick. And again, I don't know if that's cold, if it's because it's colder in the basement or if because it's just getting old. I'm really not sure. But a little bit of water would have made it easier for the paint to move around on the page. And you saw my little boo-boo there earlier as well that I was able to wipe up. I was able to wipe that up because on top of the graphic from Wilna is a coat of matte medium and that allows you um, to quickly wipe things up when they're not where they're supposed to be. So now all I'm doing is some blending um, to the other side and making sure I'm happy with the way everything is. Um, that one little area was really bothering me and I was trying to get it to be blend it out a little bit better but in the end I was just like oh it gives it character. So then I dry all of this and it dries fairly quickly which is why I kind of left these parts inside the video. <clears throat> so um, I wanted you to see that when you have a thin enough layer it doesn't take a really long time to dry your stuff. So then what I did was I grabbed what did I do here? What am I doing? I have no clue. Oh, my stencil. 
So my stencil, and then I'm using um, Liquitex modeling paste, which is a very light modeling paste. I like it a lot, but again, I don't know if it's because the basement is cold or what is going on with my supplies. Could be that it's old because it is old, um, but it's a little thicker than, than it should be and not as smooth, but that's okay. It still works. And then whenever you run something like modeling paste through your stencils, you definitely want to clean them immediately. And because I didn't have a huge amount on the stencil, I was able to just wipe everything up with a baby wipe and clean it that way. And that worked really well. The reason why you want to clean it is so that you don't get stuck with um, hard bits on your stencil that just won't come off and then pretty much make your stencil unusable. So then I'm trying something new here. I have never done it before and I prepared that, but then I remembered that Wilna had added some other colors and I wanted to do that as well. Um, I should have separated the colors a little bit further on my palette from each other so that I could have added more water to them. Uh, and then you're gonna see here that I'm pouring water into um, a spray bottle so that I can spray some water onto my spread as well. Uh, I would have gotten them to drip better if I had added more water to the paint area there. So I tried by adding some water to my spread with the spray bottle and then adding the paint and trying to get it to drip that way, but it just wasn't enough and my paint wasn't watery enough. So I just kind of went back and forth between the paint, my dirty water, Yep, I got a dirty water cup over there. I don't have a clean water cup, just only one. Um, and I went between my dirty water, my paint, and then just trying to get it to, I don't know, move some. Um, which I didn't get it really on this side, but on the right side, you're going to see lots of movement with the green paint. Like, I did really well with that one. And that's okay because... I'm a little rusty from not art journaling in like forever here. And I'm really happy with the way my piece turned out. So here's the green paint and this is a vivid lime green, which I would have never used this color ever, ever, ever if it hadn't been for Wilma first and Burn. <laughs> it's a color that I have seen her use quite a bit. And um, it really does add a little extra oomph to your pages. Um, you can see how much it brightens up the right side of the page, and I really, really like that. And you can see all that movement I've got going on now with my my green. And then again, it moved over to the other side. I didn't want it over there, so I was able to quickly sop that up with a baby wipe. So I'm going to go and add some to the top here. And again, you're going to see awesome, awesome, awesome awesome movement here in two seconds when I spray it with the water bottle. Um, I can't find my other water bottle. This is the Distress Sprayer from Tim Holtz. It's okay, but I really prefer the Primo water bottles. I think that's a little weird that I have um, favorite water bottles, but I do. Um, I think you get a better stream from the Primo water bottles. Anywho, I am drying both sides now to make sure that they're completely dry so that I can come in with the other two things. Now, what I'm adding here after this has, um, this is my own wanting to just play with new products. I had never played with them before and um, I wanted to see how it would work with a mixed media spread and I have to say that it is something that I will definitely be doing more often and I'm ready to like already get in my room and create another mixed media spread because I want to play with them some more. So what you're seeing me do here is I've got some Nouveau glue and I really am liking this uh, glue and I'm putting it on on spots and then spreading it out with my finger and the goal is to not get like a perfect shape. I just want like a funky shape. And I don't want to dry it all the way. I want to dry it somewhat so that it's still tacky. 
So I'm just hitting it with my heat gun a little bit. My heat gun is super powerful. I'm not um, drying it all the way. And then I'm adding this gilding copper sheet to that glue. And the end result for me is fantastic. Especially, um, you're going to see here in a bit after I get it all down, that I'm going to like rub it away. And in some areas, it like rubbed away and became kind of like a scratchy look, which was, oh my goodness, made me so, so happy. Like I really was happy with the result of that. So I'm just getting this side covered and um, then I'm going to just, you're going to see, I'm just, I'm literally rubbing it away. And I am rubbing a little bit hard here. Um, yeah, it stuck better than I thought it was going to. Um, but I, in the end, like I said, I am super, super happy with the result of the copper um, gilding flakes here. These, like, so awesome. Really happy. And then here on this one, you can really see how it, like, scratched away. And it did that also on the bottom right, but it's harder to see in the video. I think in the close-up video, uh, close-up photos at the end, you'll be able to see how it's scratched away. But I just love that added bit of bling to my to my page here it was really awesome so here's the stencils that came with it um, and again and I resized these to fit my b6 notebook and again in hindsight I probably should have made them a little bit smaller but I didn't and I just cut them out on um, some good cardstock you know that works fine for a stencil especially when you're not gonna be using the stencil more than once I mean now that it dried, I could use it again, but I think I even like threw it in the garbage. But you could save these and then use them again because it's just cardstock paper and um, it'll last like a couple of times before you would have to throw it out. So I'm using my finger here because I couldn't find any of my makeup brushes or my sponges that I like to use. I probably need to just go ahead and buy some new ones. Um, I really like to use like a sponge. Uh, for stenciling, but I, I could not find my sponges. So I used my fingers, and this is where I'm going to tell you, in hindsight, I wish I had had either decided to use my heavy gesso or had a heavy body white acrylic paint as opposed to the Liquitex paint. You can see here with the beauty, I used my Payne's Gray, and my Payne's Gray is a heavy body paint, and you're going to see the difference between that one and the ashes. The ashes, um, I got a lot of seepage. Uh, it's the paint is just so much thinner, so I got seepage going on between um, putting it on, and then I really had to try and put it on thicker because it was a thinner paint, and I just didn't get the same effect that I wanted, um, which is fine. It's all good. Um, I crafted. I made it a spread. And that's what it's about when you're creating. You're just experimenting and having a good old time. So that will be it for me. Thank you for watching. I highly suggest you check out Wilma Furstenberg and grab her class um, for $4.99. Again, it's a great, great deal. And it's only on sale for a limited time. So definitely give her um, a check out. I'll leave a link below. And then, again, this is a B6 mixed media notebook, which you can find in the shop, and I will link that below as well. Thanks so much for watching. Bye.